Afternoon, guys. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School, and we're back out here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Kitchen. But we've been in the woods. I'm going to take you guys out on a roadside because that's where most of this stuff grows. And we're going to look at this chicory plant before it's dug up so you can kind of see what it looks like. Hopefully, we can find some flowers that are open for you to look at. They're kind of a bluish purple color, like lavender. And it's in the dandelion family, it's an aster family plant. The leaves look very much like dandelion leaves toward the bottom of the plant, and they look a little different up at the top toward the flowering end. The roots of this plant are what we want. They're tap roots. You need a good shovel to dig those bad boys up. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then we're going to clean these roots up because chicory root is something that was, number one, used as a coffee substitute, non-caffeinated, or something that could be used to extend coffee by cutting it into coffee that you had to make it last longer because it is a bitter, which means it has medicinal benefits in activating your gallbladder and things like that to help with digestive. And bitters are things like salad greens. And the reason we eat bitters before we eat our food or eat salad before our main meal is to activate our digestive system, make our gallbladder release bile and all those types of things that happen in your digestive system get activated by bitters. So this is a bitter. So it has medicinal value, but it also has value as a coffee substitute or a coffee extender. Let's talk about how we get from this to the coffee in this video. Uh, we'll take a run out on the four-wheeler here in a minute, and we'll see if we can find some of this chicory down the gravel road here in the wildlife area on the way to the wildlife area that's adjacent to my property. This was gathered out further in another area of another wildlife area that I drove to in my Jeep to dig these up. Again, they do have a large taproot on them. You're going to need a good shovel. And the shovel I recommend if you're going to dig roots is this metal detecting shovel. And I'll try to put a link to this on this video. But this shovel right here is an amazing shovel when it comes to just digging holes in either hard ground or ground that has lots of root stock in it. Because it cuts well, it's fairly narrow, it's pretty sharp, and it's got a T-handle on it, so you can actually crank down on this thing or push in with it, jump up and down on with your feet. It's got a shelf here on the edge of the blade. Just a great all-around shovel for survival-type tasks that you're never going to destroy. A couple other things you're going to want for this kind of a project is you're going to want some type of vegetable scrubber to scrub these roots off with it, which we'll do in a minute. And then you're going to want some kind of an anvil shear or a really good, sharp, heavy-duty knife that you can cut these roots away from the stock because that's all we really need is the root. Okay, so let's take a ride real quick, see if we can find some of these, and we'll come back and start processing this stuff. All right, so this is all chicory growing here. And if we step off a little bit off to the side here, you can see here's one growing right here that didn't opened up yet. And so it grows in ditches areas along the side of the road. You can see it all along the side of this road right here in disturbed soil. And you can see with this one here, the lower you get on the plant, the more the leaves start to look like dandelion leaves. And the higher you get, that changes. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these roots kind of one at a time. And I like to kind of keep the plant on there for the time being, because it's easy just to shove that thing in there and scrub it with like a vegetable scrub brush and just scrub it really good all the way up to the leaves to get all the dirt off of it. Now, once I get that good and clean, I don't need to have the plant on it anymore. So I'll usually just cut it off if I can and drop it right in the water and don't worry about it. Toss the plant aside, give it one final rinse and set it off to the side. Go to the next plant, same thing. Scrub that dude off really, really good. Take our anvil shears and cut that dude off. Just like that. Get any leaves and things that are on there off. Get rid of them. One final rinse. Set it aside. Until we are done with all of our roots. Okay, so you can see what we've got here. And there's a couple things you could have done, or I could have done, or I could do, or you could do, with this whole scenario. If you had to go out and find that chicory somewhere and it wasn't close local to you, and that's kind of part of 
prepping, in my opinion, is knowing where these local medicinal edible plants are at so that you can go back to them whenever you need to. It's almost like a cache for you. But you can also plant these on your own. And if you cut these roots off and you leave a little bit of the rootstock on the plant, you don't take it all off and cut it all the way up to the base of the plant, you could then take most of the leaves off that thing, shove it in a mason jar of water, and get a start from it, and then plant it somewhere in your yard if you wanted to. Other options, you could also do that with a root probably. However, looking at this amount of root, we're going to dry this out, peel it down, roast it, and it's not gonna end up being very much powder when we're done. This is a very small example of what you would need to make a good can of this stuff for a coffee substitute, or even to mix with say a pound of coffee to add longevity to your stock. But it's a good example. So what we're gonna do is, the next part of this is, we need to break this down some. So we're gonna take a vegetable peeler and we're going to start to kind of peel down on this, just like this, and make it smaller. And we're skinning all the little roots off of here while we're doing that. And then when we get down to the main root, we're just gonna peel it just like we were using a potato peeler on something, just like this. And I kind of spin it back and forth a little bit. But we want this thing shredded out like this so that we can dry it. Because we're gonna to need to dry this before we roast it. If you get a big thick piece like this, just kind of put it in there and peel it down some more. Turn it around, peel it down some more. Okay, and the next step with this would be to dry it out prior to roasting it. We want it bone dry before we roast it. We could put it in a conventional oven like we talked about at about 140 degrees and let it dehydrate itself that way. But because we thinly sliced everything and made everything increase the surface area as much as possible, and we've got a black cutting board here, we're just gonna lay this out in direct sun. We got about a 92 degree day today and we got full sun. So we're gonna put this thing out on a stump out here at the Pathfinder School and just let it sit there for a couple hours. It'll be bone dry at that point, and then we can just roast it in a pan over the fire. Okay, so we've had this out in the sun for several hours, and it's bone dry now. So we're now going to take this in an ungreased pan, we we'll use a Pathfinder skillet, and we're going to roast this over low heat, We'll heat it up a little bit just to make sure it gets roasted, but we don't want to burn it either. We're not trying to set it on fire. Okay, as this skill is heating up, we're just going to kind of move this stuff around, fluff it up a little bit and move it so it doesn't burn in one spot. Now, you should be seeing some smoke, and you should be smelling this a little bit, and just constantly move it around so that nothing's getting burnt. All right, we're getting somewhere now. It's been about 15 minutes. I've been kind of flipping them flipping them around in there and kind of changing the position of them so nothing gets too burnt. Still got a few sticks in there that aren't quite roasted yet, but most of it is. We'll give it about five more minutes. Okay, folks. This uh, stitch gear handle koozie works great on that Pathfinder skillet. I have to get some of these on my website. Pretty nice. We're about where we need to be. Now, I apologize for not having a hand crank grinder out here. I've got one in order. Haven't got it yet. So we're just going to do this with an electric machine here, a KitchenAid on the Jackery. We're gonna pour all of this inside here. And then we don't need our skillet anymore. We'll get our lid put back on this dude. We'll get the skillet out of the way. And then we're just gonna give this dude a couple spins here. get a little uneven consistency on this we're still going to get what we need out of it that's fine all right so let's get this dude out of here and then we'll pour what little we've got out of this dude and into a coffee mug and you can see what we've got down in here about enough for one cup of coffee okay so couple tricky trick tricks here 
This is the Pathfinder cup. I've got it about this full with water, almost to the top, about an inch less. This is the basket from the old Pathfinder kettle, and this is the lid. I'm working on getting these components that we can sell separately. But if you put this basket inside here and this lid on top, you basically have a way to percolate or make something like an infusion. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna put that stuff in, spread it around, and get this thing on the burner. Okay, we are to the boiling point now. So we're just gonna let that dude sit there and get with the program for three or four minutes. Okay, so take our lid off here. Still gonna be hot, so we'll pick this basket up out of here with a towel. See if I'll pop that dude right out of there. If I get an edge to come up on me here. There we go. Pick that dude up and we'll set it over here on a towel. Drain off. You can see what that looks like. That caught everything, and we got a nice dark liquid in here. Looks pretty much like coffee. Dark brown. I'm going to have to let this cool down before I take a drink of it. I can tell you that I'm probably going to want to put some honey in this because I'm not much of a bitters kind of guy. I don't like black coffee. Um, you can get chicory coffee still to this day. And this is coffee and chicory mixed, which was very common out west during the westward expansion when coffee was kind of at a premium to mix chicory with coffee to kind of extend that resource. And that's kind of what we're talking about today. But it's also good for you as a herbal like we're taking it now, just the straight chicory as well. And I'll probably put some raw honey in mine. As soon as it cools down, we'll have a taste. Okay, this cup is still steaming hot. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. One thing I'll tell you real quick, just stalling for time here, on this coffee is that another time that this chicory was really important was during the Civil War. During the Civil War, the Southern troops didn't have a lot of coffee. And the northern troops didn't have a lot of tobacco. So it's kind of like one controlled the other. And there was a lot of trading that went on, even from enemy to enemy, people that were supposed to be trying to kill each other, trading coffee back and forth with tobacco just to have the necessities of life. But they used chicory quite a bit, not only to cut coffee to extend that resource, but also as a substitute for coffee to drink. All right, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I put this thing in the cooler to cool it down. It's so freaking hot out here. About 85 and this thing just wasn't cooling down. But now... We're to the point we can at least taste it. And it doesn't taste that much different than black coffee, to be flat honest with you. Obviously, there's no caffeine in it, but it does taste very much like coffee. I can understand why they use this as a coffee substitute. So let's get a little bit of honey here. See if we can drip some honey into this dude. Stir that up and see. That should sweeten her up just a little bit. All right. Hmm. Yeah, nice. It didn't take a whole lot of honey, kind of knocked that bitter off of it. But I'll tell you, it's not bad at all. It's like coffee. So, anyway, guys, listen. I appreciate you joining for this video out here today. I wanted to go through the process of making chicory from the ground to the coffee. I appreciate your views and I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. I'm drinking that whole cup.